Okay, the second type of natural selection is directional selection. So, for this selection, it will favor one extreme phenotype uh, which causes these uh, extreme phenotype genes become more frequent in the next generation. And then directional selection, uh, at the same time, we will select against the other extreme phenotype. Maksudnya, dia pilih satu extreme phenotype, dia select against another extreme phenotype. Okay, dia pilih satu sajalah extreme phenotype. So, apa yang berlaku, uh, af uh, after directional selection, uh, choose only one extreme phenotype. It will causes the frequency curve uh, to shift to one direction to the favorable end. Okay, uh, so katakanlah dia pilih uh, extreme phenotype yang uh, di sebelah kanan. Okay, uh, di sebelah sini lah kita tengok original population dulu. So let's say dia pilih extreme phenotype yang di sebelah kanan. Apa yang berlaku adalah the curve after the selection will shift to the Right lah sebab yang dia pilih tu di sebelah kanan So it will shift to the favor, favored uh, phenotype uh, And then the favored and hujung yang dia pilih lah okay? uh, So kalau kita tengok uh, dalam uh, contoh curve yang ditunjuk di sini uh, Apa yang berlaku adalah uh, during the selection Actually dia select against one extreme So dia tekan pada satu extreme group ni Menyebabkan curve tu shift to the right So after the selection kita boleh nampak graph yang warna biru ni Dia lebih ke kanan So bila lebih ke kanan dalam kes ni kita boleh nampak Dia pilih more uh, Dia pilih extreme group yang lagi satu lah Uh, yang sebelah kanan Yang sebelah kiri dah jadi uh, Not favored So jadi sikit sangat sebelah kiri ni lah uh, Sepatutnya besar macam ni awal-awal After that dia jadi sedikit lah Macam ni okay? uh, So kita boleh nampak the Select against one extreme The favor another extreme Okay, uh, and then for directional selection, it occurs when there is changes in the environmental condition or when there are emigration to new habitat. So, untuk directional selection, uh, dia hanya akan berlaku pada environment yang berubah. Okay, ada perubahan yang berlaku, perubahan yang I say, uh, agak high impact okay, uh, pada environment tersebut boleh menyebabkan directional selection. Kalau kita compare dengan the first natural selection which is stabilizing selection, uh, stabilizing selection uh, it will just occur in environment that is stable. Okay, ataupun tidak ada uh, impact yang sangat besar pada environment lah. Okay, itu stabilizing selection. Tapi directional selection dia berlaku pada Uh, environment yang ada changes in condition in that environment okay and then directional selection it will favor one extreme group uh, kita dah cakap tadi and then it will select against another extreme group and intermediate group dengan kata lain one extreme group sahaja ataupun one extreme phenotype sahaja yang dipilih another extreme phenotype and intermediate phenotype will be eliminated okay so this selection will reduce genetic variability And then this selection also may lead to evolution of species or in other words, uh, formation of new species. Once again, if we compare to the first uh, natural selection curve ataupun graph which is stabilizing selection, stabilizing selection will not lead to formation of new species. But directional selection, yes, it will lead to uh, evolution of species or formation of new species okay so let's have a look at the example for directional selection which we select one extreme we uh, select against another extreme so we have industrial melanism so industrial melanism ni adalah uh, satu fenomena lah okay ataupun one condition that occur in that environment Industrial refer to industry so banyak kilang-kilang uh, yang dibina pada kawasan tersebut uh, Melanism refer to darkening of uh, something So dalam kes ni untuk industrial melanism kita refer pada darkening of trees okay, Pokok menjadi lebih gelap lah dia punya kulit luar tu kulit pokok okay? okay so kita tengok apa yang berlaku uh, During the early decades of the uh, Oh sorry uh, 
Nama lain untuk industri melanism adalah black pepper moth uh, Refer kepada sejenis insect uh, warna hitam Black pepper moth ataupun nama saintifik dia Biston betularia So you may choose from the three either one okay, To write in your uh, examination If this kind of question comes out in your exam Okay, so what happened actually uh, during the early decades of the Industrial Revolution uh, uh, di England, apa yang berlaku adalah trees at the countryside between London dengan Manchester um, I would say maybe a few hours between London and Manchester What happened to the trees? The trees was blackened or covered The trees were blackened or covered with soot from the new coal burning factory. Okay, masa industri revolution, apa yang berlaku adalah banyak kilang-kilang ataupun factory yang di uh, di dibina. Okay, so apa yang berlaku adalah kilang-kilang ni uh, menggunakan coal untuk dibakar, arang batu lah. Okay, coal untuk dibakar. So, bila kita burn coal, apa yang berlaku, they are emission, okay, ataupun emitted of uh, soot, uh, jelaga, okay, soot yang warna hitam lah, keluar sebenarnya daripada uh, uh, apa, corong factory tu lah, okay. So, apa yang berlaku adalah, uh, soot tu, dia menyebabkan trees, pokok, Uh, di kawasan daripada London sampai Manchester menjadi hitam dan gelap okay, disebabkan pembakaran arang batu tadi okay. so uh, di kawasan tersebut ada satu insect ni yang ada uh, dua warna lah the first one adalah warna putih the second one adalah warna hitam white peppered moth dengan black peppered moth So, untuk white peppered moth after industrial revolution, disebabkan dia warna putih, it cannot camouflage better with the trees. Okay, dia dah tak boleh uh, bersembunyi lah. Okay, menyama. Sorry, bersembunyi pula. Uh, menyama dekat pokok yang dah gelap tadi lah. Sebab warna putih dengan warna hitam, dia akan kontras. Okay. So, what happen is white pepper moth uh, will die from the sulfur dioxide emission daripada pembakaran coal tadi. Dan lagi satu, white pepper moth dia akan uh, mati disebabkan dia easily detected by predator. Kenapa easily detected by predator? Sebab white pepper moth dia akan duduk dekat trees. Uh, so, bila dia duduk dekat trees, at the same time the trees were covered with soot. So, the, uh, the trees dah jadi gelap lah. Uh, so, bila uh, warna putih dengan warna hitam, dia akan jadi sangat kontra. So, the predator will easily detect the white peppered moth. So, the white peppered moth are no longer blended in the polluted ecosystem. Okay. Okay, what happened to the black peppered moth? Okay, so for black peppered moth, they can camouflage very well on the blackened trees and they will uh, protect themselves from being eaten by predator. So, uh, apa yang berlaku adalah sebelum industrial revolution, uh, sebelum kilang-kilang dibina, sebelum ada asap yang banyak ataupun jelaga, uh, Environment tersebut memilih white peppered moth untuk survive. Disebabkan white peppered moth boleh camouflage better on the trees. Okay. But after industrial revolution berlakunya uh, environmental changes. Okay. Um, the black peppered moth is Uh, favored more okay ataupun will survive better compared to white peppered moth sebab after industrial revolution uh, banyak kilang-kilang yang dibina menyebabkan uh, kilang tersebut uh, menggunakan lebih banyak arang batu so arang batu tu burning of the coal uh, will causes uh, trees from London to Manchester Uh, covered with soot So pokok kat kawasan tu menjadi lebih gelap lah Okay Disebabkan asap ataupun jelaga tadi So bila black pepper moth uh, duduk dekat pokok tu Memang tak nampak langsung black pepper moth So not easily detected by predator Okay so kita boleh nampak Bila ada perubahan pada satu kawasan Dia akan memilih uh, phenotype mana yang boleh survive Okay 
So the black peppered moth will increase in number while the white peppered moth will decrease in number. As the area become more industrialized and dirtier. Okay, cuba kita tengok gambar ni. Uh, kalau uh, before industrial revolution, can you spot the white peppered moth? Okay, uh, kalau seimbas lalu, in a glimpse, actually uh, we can't detect the white peppered moth. But if we look closely, actually kita boleh nampak lah ni white peppered moth. Okay. Uh, so, dia sangat pandai camouflage dengan tree. Uh, so, ni kulit tree lah. Tree bark. Okay. Ini before industrial revolution. So, kita tengok after industrial revolution. Uh, can you spot directly the white peppered moth? Uh, so, kita boleh nampak directly okay, white peppered moth tersebut lah. Uh, so, nampak eh. So, easily detected by predator. That's why after industrial revolution, white peppered moth punya population akan decrease lah sebab senang dinampak oleh uh, predator. So, predator boleh makan dia lah. Tapi, uh, after industrial revolution, dia berpihak kepada black peppered moth. So, black peppered moth akan reproduce more and survive. So, can you spot the black peppered moth if I'm not labeling the diagram? <laughs> Okay, uh, siapa yang boleh spot tu maksudnya mata kamu memang hebat lah. Okay, uh, so black peppered moth tu ini. Okay, uh, so uh, black peppered moth tu seriously dia boleh well adapt and camouflage better on the uh, blackened tree. Uh, so ni pokok lah, dia orang duduk kat pokok ni. Uh, so selepas pokok tu dah ditutup oleh suit. Uh, so, black moth tu is more uh, favorite compared to white, white moth. Okay. So, itu one example. Another example is big size of Galapagos finches. Uh, I'll not uh, explain more on this one. You may read on your own. Okay, from your notes. Okay, that's all for directional selection.